Okay, so I saw a question on the community that I thought uh, warranted a slightly more detailed answer, and what better than to walk through it as part of some video content to help uh, share some of what's going on in the background in more detail. So if we look at Troy's question, he's asking about, uh, he's got plenty of generation being produced at this moment by his PV, a really good sized um, solar array producing 7.2 uh, kilowatts that's fantastic and that's way more than his house load which is uh, less than a kilowatt as you can see 0.86 his battery's charging at 4.23 and he's exporting just over two kilowatts so that's the makeup of this screenshot in terms of the energy distribution and his question is why is the battery only charging at a little over four uh, kilowatts when he's generating over seven his house usage is quite low and the spillover is going down to the grid and there's a couple reasons for this and the first one and the most obvious is normally that the battery is at a high state of charge and as the battery state of charge uh, nears full so above about 80 to 90 percent you'll notice that it starts to taper off the charging speed and that's to protect the health of the battery that's not the case in this um, example because it's only at 63 percent state of charge so it's not that, but that is quite a common question with people reporting, oh, it's at 95%. Why is it slow right down to a crawl? It's probably the algorithm and the BMS protecting the battery and lowering the charge current, which lowers the charging speed. If it's not because your battery is nearly full or approaching full, it's normally temperature. So as we go into the winter uh, months here in the UK, it's quite common to see questions about batteries underperforming. The colder the temperature, the um, the slower the charge rate, the slower the discharge rate. And this is directly equal to the voltage of the battery. Bigger systems are impacted less because uh, volts over amps gives you that kilowatts and uh, the kilowatt output. So smaller batteries that get cold or are close to being full drastically see a performance uh, drop off. So let's assume that it's not temperature related uh, and that the temperature for this is, is you know well above the kind of typical 12 to 15 Celsius. But below that, we start to see the performance slowly reducing. I do have a separate video if you look at my channel uh, that has the battery algorithm in terms of what amps at what temperature at what state of charge. So have a look there if you're interested in really understanding what the charge curve characteristics and algorithm are. So if it's not state of charge and it's not temperature, what else could it be? And it's most likely um, either inverter or battery uh, limited. So if we look at uh, example, let me share my screen. So we look at the data sheet here. This is for uh, an EQ2900, which is the new marketing name for the ECS2900. And if we scroll down, we can look at the smallest configuration that they're calling the L2, which is one master, one slave. We can see that has an operating voltage of 115, sorry, a nominal voltage of 115 volts and a recommended charge and discharge uh, at 25 with a max uh, peak of 50. So if we look now at another tool that I use called Rapid Tables, and we put in 20 DC because it's batteries, 25 amps at 115. If you had that small battery with one master, one slave of that particular model, you would be able to charge and discharge at 1.8, a little over 1.8 kilowatts. Um, so that's not inverter limited. That will be, you could have a 10 kilowatt inverter and big K series or a big H3 Pro. You'd still only be able to charge uh, best case at 2.875 and there or about. And even if you be put in 40 amps, because imagine you're boosting still 4.6 kilowatts, but 25 is pretty normal. And remember the colder the battery, the lower this amp. So if you're at, I think it's 12 Celsius, um, you're going to be around 15 amps between 10 and 15. So you can see how this now tapers right off. So that's 1.7. We do 10 amps just over one kilowatt so you if you are reduced to 10 amps charging because of the state of charge or temperature or a combination of both 
you may find yourself struggling to charge and discharge at one kilowatt if you have that small uh, L2 version of the EQ2900. Now let's look at another example, an EQ4800, the flagship battery that Fox sell, huge scale, scales right up to just shy of 42 kilowatt hours, and uh, you are, money's no object, I want the biggest battery. You've got an L9, one master, eight, uh, eight slaves. You are rocking a nominal voltage uh, per cell of 42 volts nearly, and you can see here the volt operating range is up to 163 volts. So let's go back to rapid tables that say, uh, oh, what was the, one second, what was the amps? Recommended amps are 30. So we'll go back to rapid tables. We'll say oh, 30 amps. Um, let's start with 400 volts. You can see we're already seeing 12 kilowatts. 440, 13 kilowatts. Was it 463? Nearly 14 kilowatts in that battery uh, stack capability. Again, subject to temperature, capacity, and the fact that the, is the BMS going to allow you uh, to charge and discharge at 30 amps all the time? Probably not under all conditions. So what is probably happening if we go back to this, if we go back to the image that uh, Troy shared is um, if it's not temperature or state of charge, it's probably the battery configuration. And you'll be able to tell this by looking at what the battery voltage is either on the inverter screen or if you drill into the the chart one of the options is battery volts you can you can see what the battery voltage is and um just use this tool this rapid tables times your uh, current of say 25 amps times that by the voltage that you see on the app and i wouldn't be surprised if you see something like this this rating so the bms's job the battery management system which is normally integrated into the master battery module but it sometimes is separate if you're using some of the older batteries like the Myra's or the HV2600s, they have a separate physical BMS. The BMS's job is to safely allow maximum performance. It is constantly trying to allow you to charge and discharge optimally and at the maximum that you can do safely, subject to the algorithm around um, the charge and discharge current so if the BMS is always trying to provide you the most charge and discharge capacity, seeing something like this charging slower than what the PV is generating it, it's, it's probably a good indicator that the, the battery model, the capacity, the voltage, that is um, that is probably the limiting factor here. The great thing about a Fox inverter is it doesn't start clipping the PV production um, unless you've got an export limit set. It just allows, it tries to charge the battery as fast as possible, and then subject to no other limits, such as an export limit, etc. it allows the surplus generation to flow as export. If you have an export limit turned on, then it will just, it will stop, and then it will start to clip. If you have no export limit, you'll notice that it will try and charge the battery, and then any additional generation will just start to get clipped, and you can see that normally on the graph going in down a rabbit hole of every possible permutation but for troy in this example uh, it is likely the number of batteries or the type of battery and the configuration um, that is going to be the limiting factor subject to you having a big enough inverter remember that the inverter can charge the batteries if it's a ace if it's a dc coupled inverter so the solar panels and the battery are plugged into the same inverter then you can charge the batteries dc to dc from the from the panels and you can also export to the grid so you don't if your inverter is a five kilowatt inverter you could potentially put seven kilowatts worth of panels on that you could be exporting at five kilowatts but also charging the batteries at a couple of kilowatts easily uh, they typically allow around 150 percent uh overage sometimes it's even more than that especially on the bigger uh, h3 and the h3 pluses so yeah know that the system will always try to maximize uh, the battery charging within the configuration the parameters especially in self-use mode 
and I just thought we'd go into a little bit more detail about how your battery configuration and how that means that your voltage is typically higher and then the, the, the charging and discharging amps is all controlled by the BMS. There are some configurations where you can't really improve this and that's in configurations like the EP batteries. They're those square wall mountable ones. They are a set voltage as they come. When you add more EP batteries, you add more capacity, but because they're parallel connected, not serially connected, you um you don't the voltage doesn't go up with every battery that you add of the EP range. Unlike the EQ and the other batteries, where as you stack more batteries, your voltage increases. I hope this has been helpful and it's not just turned into a bit of a ramble, but uh, that's some of the background as to some of the limitations uh, around your battery configuration. Thanks.